Welcome to week 16 of Algebra 1 with Mrs. Weibark. This week we will continue our discussion of polynomials. We will be talking about classifying polynomials and adding and subtracting them. Going to start by taking a look at the basic building blocks of algebraic expressions. These are polynomials. We use polynomials in real life situations all the time. For example, many of you have probably watched the Detroit fireworks in the summer, if, if not in person, at least on television. And did you know that we could calculate the exact height of a firework at a given time after it's launched? The height and feet of fireworks launch straight up into the air from S feet off the ground at a velocity V after t seconds is given by the equation h equals negative 16 times time squared plus the velocity times time plus s, the feet off the ground when it was launched. So for example, to find the height of a firework launched from a 10 foot platform at 200 feet per second after five seconds can be found by substituting five for time 200 for velocity, and 10 for its initial feet off the ground. That means that this firework would be 610 feet off the ground in just five seconds. That's pretty amazing. But then again, fireworks always are amazing to me. Last week we talked about monomials, so we're gonna begin our discussion of vocabulary there. Just as a reminder, an expression that is a number, variable, or a product of numbers and one or more variables is called a monomial. Monomials have no variables in the denominator. Therefore, they do not include fractions that have a variable in the denominator. And mono implies one. Monomials cannot include negative exponents either. There are several examples here. If you have room on your notes, include at least two or three. A binomial refers to an expression that is the sum of two monomials. It has two unlike terms, because just as bi means two wheels in a bicycle, it also means two terms in a binomial. Here are several examples, and please include one or two of them in your notes. A trinomial is the sum of three monomials. It has three unlike terms. So similarly, as tricycles have three wheels, trinomials have three terms. And here are several more examples. A polynomial can be a monomial or it can be the sum or difference of two or more monomials. Poly means many, so po the term polynomial can include an expression with just one term, such as a monomial, or a hundred terms. Here are several examples. Please include at least one of them in your notes. So poly means many. When there's only one term, it's a monomial, such as 5x. When there are two terms, it's a binomial, such as 2x plus 3. When there are three terms, it's a trinomial, such as x squared minus x minus 6. So what about four terms? Should we call it a quadnomial? No, it's just too hard to pronounce. So once we get past three in a trinomial, we just use the term polynomial, regardless of how many terms there are. We like to write polynomials in standard form. There are two criteria for a polynomial to be in standard form. First, it should contain no like terms. So if I start with an expression such as x squared plus 2x plus 5 plus 3x squared minus 4x, I would simplify by combining like terms. x squared plus 3x squared yields 4x squared 2x minus 4x is negative 2x plus the constant 5. And polynomials are also generally written in descending order. This means that the exponents of the variables decrease from left to right. 
So in this example, we have the x squared term first, followed by the x term, followed by the constant, because a constant always has a degree zero. This is what the first half of page one of your completed notes should look like. If necessary, please take a moment to catch up. Next, we're going to talk about the degree of a polynomial. There are two ways to classify polynomials. First, we learned we can classify them by the number of terms, and now we're going to classify them by degree. So the degree of a monomial is the sum of the exponents of its variables. So in the examples below, we have 3 quarters x. Since x is really x to the first, this is a first degree monomial. In my second example, I have 7x squared y to the third. When I'm finding the degree of a term or a monomial, I actually add all the exponents, even if they don't go with the same variable. So I add 2 and 3 to get a degree of 5. This negative 4 doesn't have any variables, so it has a degree 0. The number 0 is actually special. It has no degree at all. So this is how you find the degree of a monomial. We're going to use this information in just a moment to figure out polynomials. To find the degree of a polynomial, first I look at each individual term within the polynomial, and I find its degree. The term with the highest degree gives us the degree for the entire polynomial. So in this first example, 3x squared minus 8x to the fourth plus x to the fifth, my highest degree term is this x to the fifth. So that means that this entire polynomial is referred to as a fifth degree polynomial. Please do not add exponents from one term to the next. It's often tempting for students to say that this would be 2 plus 4 plus 5, yielding an 11 degree polynomial, but that would be incorrect. We only add the exponents within a term. In this next example, we have a 7th degree polynomial, because the first term has m to the 1, n squared, so this would be a 3rd degree term. m to the 3rd, n to the 4th is a 7th degree, and 8, of course, has a degree of 0. So since this term has seven letters, it's the winner, and this is our seventh degree polynomial. Looking at a couple more examples, if I have 3x minus 2, the x has the highest degree of these two terms, so this would be a first degree polynomial. And again, anytime you have just a constant, such as the number 8, it has no variables or letters, so its degree is 0. Keep in mind that coefficients do not have anything to do with the degree, so don't make any mistakes of adding in your coefficients. And this is what the second half of page one of your notes should look like. If needed, please take a moment to catch up. This is an example of a polynomial in standard form. Notice that the highest exponent comes for first, x to the fourth, followed by x squared, just x or x to the one, and then the last term is usually the constant because it has degree zero. So we say that the degree of these monomials decrease from left to right. There are two ways that we name polynomials. We look at their degree, and we look at the number of terms that they contain. So in this first example, I have just the number 5. This would be 0 degree, and because it has only one term, it's a monomial. So you'll want to complete this table in your notes as we go along. My second example, 7x plus 4, has two terms, making it a binomial, and the highest degree term is 7x, which is one. So this is a first degree binomial. 
Our next example, 3x squared plus 2x plus 1, has the highest degree of 2, and because there are three terms in this expression, it is a trinomial. So it is a second degree trinomial. Next, we have a third degree term, but there's only one term, so this would be a third degree monomial. And lastly, I have 9x to the fourth plus 11x. The x to the fourth is the highest degree with 4, so this would be a fourth degree binomial because it has two terms. We've looked at many examples of polynomials, but it's important to recognize that not all expressions are polynomials. And here are a few examples of items that are not considered polynomials. Expressions that include fractions with a variable in the bottom, square roots, expressions that have an exponent in the, uh, I'm sorry, expressions that have a variable in the exponent, and also negative exponents. So all of these are examples of expressions that are not polynomials. And this concludes the first half of page two of your notes. We have one more topic to go. Next, we're going to talk about adding and subtracting polynomials. This means finding the sum or difference. And in short, it just means combining like terms. Just as we can perform operations on integers, we can also perform the same operations on polynomials. We can add polynomials using two methods. Which one will you choose? Method one is the vertical method. And in this case, we line up the like terms and then add the coefficients. So in example one, which I would like you to include on your notes, we have the first polynomial as 4x squared plus 6x plus 7. And we are adding 2x squared minus 9x plus 1. So we've lined up our terms to be in columns based on like terms, and then we add the coefficients. So 4x squared plus 2x squared is 6x squared. 6x plus negative 9x is negative 3x, and 7 plus 1 is 8. You probably don't have room for example 2 on your notes, but take a look at this unique situation. Our first polynomial is of the third degree. It has a 2x to the third term, but our second polynomial does not. So it's okay to write in a zero as a placeholder when there are missing terms. This can help you to keep things lined up. The second method is called the horizontal method. In this case, we group the like terms. So for example, we would group 4x squared with 2x squared. We would then group 6x and minus 9x. And lastly, we would group the constants, 7 plus 1. So now I have small groupings of like terms and I add the coefficients. So once again, I get 6x squared minus 3x plus 8. Again, you probably don't have room for example 2 on your notes, though you should have included example 1. But this is done the same way. We would group the like terms. Negative 2x to the third is the only third degree term. We then have 2x squared plus 5x squared grouped together. Negative 5x and positive 4x are grouped and then three is grouped with negative five. And when we combine the like terms, we get negative two x to the third plus seven x squared minus x minus two. Now we're going to take a look at subtracting. Just keep in mind that when you subtract, what you're really doing is adding the opposite. So the easiest way to do this when using the vertical method is to line up the like terms once again and then change the signs of the second polynomial. Because remember, if you subtract a positive, it becomes a negative. And when you subtract a negative, it becomes 
positive. So you can essentially go through and take the opposite sign of each of the subtracted polynomial. So when I combine the like terms, I get 2x to the third minus x to the third, which is x to the third. A positive 5x squared plus 8x squared is 13x squared. I've used a placeholder of zero here since there's only one term with an x, so this is just negative 3x, and then I have minus 11. And that is the simplest that this expression can be written. Subtracting can also be done horizontally. Using the same example, I would write the opposite of each term of the second polynomial. So I'm looking at this piece here, and I've changed this to be minus x to the third plus 8x squared minus 11. I then group the like terms, and then I combine. So I would again get x to the third plus 13x squared plus 3x plus a negative means minus 11. And this is what the last part of your notes should look like. If you need a moment, please pause and catch up. Thank you for watching this Wybark production.